period. Well, great. Here's a video. But on the line with us, we have Phelan to tell us a bit more about the company and I suppose a bit more about the history of the company. Phelan, what are you doing? I'm doing very well, Morgan, and yourself? Yeah, not so bad. Come here, Phelan, thank you very much for coming on with us and giving us the time. No, I'm happy to talk to you. It seems that'd be beneficial to both of us, so it's, yeah. a, it's all good. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Tell me, Phelan, I suppose, for anyone that's listening, that I suppose anyone that's maybe into growing cereals and all this kind of stuff they would have heard of your company um, a long time ago but, or, but I suppose even you were telling me the other before we come on going away back in the 70s your, your parents I think you said started the company Indeed um, Phelan Senior has a long uh, mechanical background and in the late 70s he established the business fixing agricultural machinery and doing general sort of jobs for local manufacturers, local farmers, local companies. And um, Sheila was with him at the start, just doing office work and just giving, you know, they, each people have their own expertise and that was very much the case for my parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And where exactly are you, are you based in or where is your premises? Uh, we're, we're based in between uh, Carrickford Cross and Dundalk on the O one seven eight. So we've been operating from the same premises uh, since the late seventies. Oh, absolutely fantastic! That's great to hear. And I suppose you said from your, your, your father and your mother started out that time, like you were saying, he started out repairing um, machinery and doing repairs, probably for local farmers and local whatever. But um, you were saying then he branched out into kind of a couple of other pieces in sheer grabs and things like that you were saying yeah so i uh, initially got into sheer grabs uh, pasture uh, choppers slurry tanks bale handling equipment and um that type of material but he eventually when we moved to our new premises um we for initially anyway he would have manufactured a fair amount of hedge cutters and tractor mounted aerial platforms uh, as well so the uh, type of man that if he if he likes a topic he'll try to develop it and that was very much the case for those two type of machines brilliant 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 and i suppose like a lot of other irish manufacturers and all that like you know he seemed no i never met the man but he seemed like a man that had he had foresight he could see kind of see what was coming and what was needed in the future Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, like um, he always would have uh, keenly observed the, the general farming trends and uh, noted it. And his his best way of responding to that would be to, to get his hands dirty and to create a product that fulfilled the need in the market itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, it's not way to last. I suppose you were also saying then that he kind of he concentrated more on we call it serial equipment from was it 2000 you said 2000 indeed um, we uh, moved into our new premises and at that stage we decided not to make pasture toppers and that type of equipment anymore and we decided to focus solely on roller mills grain cleaners augers elevators basically anything to do with rolling grain um we'd have uh, various different types of products for that Brilliant. and we say when you're when you're manufacturing the products then is it is it all kind of in-house or is a lot of it or what, 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 what way is the manufacturing process with yourselves so the manufacturing process itself um we do have uh, cutting folding uh, machinery rolling machinery but typically we let uh, external companies do a fair amount of the folding and cutting solely due to the, the major box equipment that they'd have on their premises. Yeah. And we would focus a lot on fabrication, assembly and uh, spraying and quality controls and everything like that. Brilliant, brilliant. And I suppose, then, like I've seen, we, we can see these videos here that you that you've seen me or whatever like but um is it is it all a lot of your stuff then is it for the bigger fella or is it for the smaller fella or is there a bit for everyone yeah our typical uh, customer would be the typical customers would be the farmer the contractor and the feed compounder brilliant brilliant so they're, they're 
there's something in the in the brochure for everyone. Indeed, like we do we small electric machines for farmers with an output of about ton and a half an hour up to a big electric machine with 50, 55 tons an hour. Brilliant. And um, but I suppose look for someone here feeling just alone, West Limerick, Hen and R, Kerry area myself. Um, I suppose look, there's not a lot of cereals being grown. Well, there is a bit, like you know, it's not massive down here. But is is there enough in Ireland to keep you going, or the exporter? Yeah, like um, the the Irish market is uh, quite important to us. But you know yourself, the amount of tillage ground compared to the 60s, 70s, and 80s is unfortunately going down mm -hmm. continuously. Even though I think that Irish grown grain is of better quality than imported grain. Mm -hmm. um, but I know we do, this past 20 years, we've exported to, to the UK, uh, we export to Poland this past five or six years. Uh, to France this past three or four years Perfect. and we sell the odd machine out to New Zealand as well. Absolutely fantastic. So look, it's a, it's a growing, a growing thing. And we say, Phelan, for some people know that had very, very little to do with, we say, cereals or, or grains or whatever, corn or whatever oats. Or the only thing I ever saw oats was feed them to the donkey or a, or a, or a vintage rally. We say, talk me through the, through the process, we say, of we say the oats coming into the farmer and they're going into the roller. What what exactly does your mill do that we say might be a bit different or a bit better than the next fella? Um so just talking about um the process itself, like depending on the animal that's being fed, whether it's a uh, livestock, whether it's pig or poultry, the the grain itself must be processed to suit that animal's digestive system. Mm -hmm. So so for let's say um, a dairy or beef stock, it typically be a roll sample. For let's say chickens, it typically be a kibble sample. And for po a pig farmers, it would typically be a finely ground sample itself. So um, the, all the, the machines might look visually quite the same, but depending on the animal, the machine would have be you know would be geared differently to suit the animal. Okay. Um, some some nice features on, on our machines are basically uh, the rules on them themselves are very high quality, very hard wearing uh, rules which don't come into contact with the with the other roll itself, which uh, saves an awful lot on diesel and by far and away less maintenance uh, whenever you have to do your maintenance. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was saying, could could one machine be kind of co-opted into doing two different jobs you know we say if you had a dairy farm and we say maybe if you had other livestock on it as well is it a big job to to convert the machine or get it to do two different jobs no um so another nice feature on the machine that we have is the operator control so if you want to go from let's say a likely uh, a broken sample let's say you're crimping at one time of the season you'll set the operator control for that sample. But then on the other hand, if you were doing, a, um, let's say a sample for chickens, you would adjust the roll gap handle and the flow at which the grain enters the rolls. And between those two operator controls, you'd have a very nice sample for uh, chickens as well. Oh, perfect, yeah. So like, I would say a mixed livestock farm or whatever, like you wouldn't need You'd, you'd only need two or three machines and one machine do the whole lot for you. Absolutely, like uh, I think that all manufacturers are, and all, more importantly, all farmers, they want adaptability in their machine rather than a one-trick pony. So we're very much conscious of that. Yeah, because we say going back years ago, you know, the the grain rollers that I might remember that I would have seen in farms, they there was kind of one setting and that was it. Yeah, and it was typically a vice grip held it in position for about 25 years and it never moved from there. Yeah, yeah, and don't move the adjustments. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let me feel if there, if there is someone watching this or listening to this, um, and if they were thinking, you know what, I might look into that. We, 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 we have our own cereals or whatever, and you know, we're selling it every year to the local co-op. You know, we might, we might keep back a bit next year for ourselves. Uh, how do they contact yourselves or, or is there a range of dealerships or is it just yourselves or where can we buy a machine? Uh, 
Uh, well, in Ireland, uh, we prefer to deal uh, directly with the customer, so we've done that for this past 40 years, and it's worked very well. Um, we have a website, weeklyengineering.ie, and uh, we're available uh, to answer any sales calls, sales inquiries on our telephone number, which is 042-93-74388. Perfect. And was the, just for argument's sake, I'm after ringing you now when I want to, I want to order a machine for the coming the fall of the year or whatever. What kind of time frame am I looking at before I'd be expecting delivery? Uh, depending on the type of machine itself, uh, be approximately eight to nine weeks, maybe seven weeks for some of the smaller machines, but uh, that would be an average uh, waiting time on the machine. Which isn't too bad at all, considering some of the some other equipment now. The fellows are telling me there's nearly a 12 month waiting list. 12 month uh, waiting list. Well, uh, I think they should uh, get a bigger uh, production yeah, facility. Yeah, yeah, they should take a leaf out of your book, Phelan. Well, we try, like, yeah. I'm sure, like, all, all companies out there, we're always uh, looking to improve the manufacturing process, and yeah. that's something that we focus on every single day here. Yeah, brilliant. No, long may it last, and uh, keep up the good work above them. Uh, absolutely, Morgan, and uh, just to say, I think that the, the videos that you're doing are very important at the minute to, to keep the importance of agriculture alive in Ireland, whereas people in metropolitan areas wouldn't consider it an important part of Irish, you know, lifestyle and for, for you know, a significant percentage of people it is. So I think you're doing great work on that. You know what, I really appreciate your comment. Thank you very much. And you know, like even for someone listening, half the reason I started doing this is because I suppose even for my own kids to figure out where the food comes from and where, like what's the process of getting it to the kitchen table. It just, it's just not... It just doesn't magically appear on the supermarket shelves. There is a big uh, disconnect at the minute. I'm sure you, you know better than me between agriculture, oh, rural and metropolitan mm -hmm. life. So it, it's because mm -hmm. there's somebody that's bridging that divide. Hopefully, hopefully. We'll we, we be building the bridge every day. That's it indeed, indeed. Phelan, thank you very much. And um, like I said, anyone that's looking for the link, I have a link in the description below. And um, thanks again, Phelan, for your time. Thanks very much, Morgan. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Give it more flow. Period. Well, great. Is a video.